The 1970s, the decade where the home computer first found a foothold. Although for most of those years, the very idea of a personal computer wasn't yet fully defined, with many machines appearing strange simply because they were the first of their kind. There were plenty of fascinating steps along the way to the famous Apple II, TRS-80, and Commodore PET, so let's take a look. These are the 70s computers that stand out for their weirdness in regards to look, usability, and specifications relative to their contemporaries. The CTC Data Point 2200 Developed by the Computer Terminal Corporation in 1971, the 2200 was designed to be a cost-efficient terminal compatible with multiple mainframes. Intel was originally contracted to design the processor for it, but CTC ended up using their own bit serial processing solution made up of transistor-transistor logic, or TTL, components, emulating mainframe terminal connections through software. This also meant that users could actually use it as a true personal computer, not just a terminal. Oh, and that original processor CTC asked Intel for? Well, it turned into the legendary 8008 CPU, the basis of x86 architecture used in PCs for decades. The Triumph Adler TA-1000 Released in 1973 by German document management company Triumph Adler, the TA-1000 is one of several computing systems from the time that aren't simply desktops, but are also the desk itself. The 1000 series was an all-in-one accounting computer solution for small to mid-sized businesses using 8-bit TTL logic, but with a 16-bit address bus. It had a whopping 1 kilobyte ROM, 2 kilobytes of RAM, a built-in assembly language interpreter, a full-size dot matrix printer, and support for CRT displays, compact cassette tape storage, and even hard drive and floppy disk support later on. The MCM-70 the microcomputer machine's Model 70 hails from Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and is often considered to be the first portable personal computer, weighing in at 20 pounds. Shipping in fall of 1974, the fully loaded MCM-70 came specced with a one-line plasma display and the brand spanking new Intel 8008 CPU running at 0.8 MHz, making it one of the forerunners of personal computers using a microprocessor. It was meant to provide a convenient solution for educators and businesses to use the APL programming language, and so the fully loaded Model 70 with 8K of RAM and dual cassette drives was a bargain at just shy of 10,000 Canadian dollars. SWT PC TV Typewriter well, here's a crazy concept. How about instead of printing out results on paper or buying an expensive CRT display, you build the display hardware into the computer and use a standard television? Well, that idea is exactly what makes the Southwest Technical Products Corporation TV typewriter a milestone in personal computing, even if it wasn't exactly a computer. It was a kit of super low-cost terminal hardware that let you display 16 lines of 32 uppercase characters on a TV. But it wasn't long before hobbyists figured out how to integrate this setup, designed by Goodyear Aerospace engineer Don Lancaster, into their home PCs as well, a solution used in many home computers years afterward. The Xerox Alto. This machine was so far ahead of its time that it's a wonder that Xerox didn't dominate the personal computer marketplace in the latter part of the decade. Released in 1973, the Alto was the first computer with an operating environment designed from the ground up to use a graphical user interface, inspiring a generation of GUIs introduced a decade later. It also pioneered the what-you-see-is-what-you-get style of document preparation, which made full use of its portrait orientation CRT display. And of course, driving much of this interaction was a revolutionary device called a mouse, something that wouldn't go mainstream in other computers until many years later. And all of this was available with 96K of RAM starting at just $40,000. The IA Sys IA 7301. Also known as the computer in a book, the IA-7301 is one of many training computers in 1976 based on the Intel 8080 CPU. But this one was unique since it came packaged in a three-ring binder alongside a 250-page programming course. It was a bit more expensive and fully featured than other CPU trainers, though, costing $450 for a model with 1K of RAM and ROM, and support for program storage through a tape recorder and even S100 cards through the use of an external expander board, making it decidedly less portable. The ISC CompuColor 2 
Sometimes called the Renaissance Machine, Intelligence Systems Corporation of Norcross, Georgia first released this in 1976. Not only does it have a colorific keyboard, but it's the first home computer to house a color display. While its predecessor, the CompuColor 1, was a professional computer with a color vector monitor, the 2 was a home micro with a 13-inch General Electric TV that displayed its 128 by 128 8 color graphics. It even featured CD storage, but it's not what it sounds like. The CompuColor drive, or CD, was a custom-built 5.25 inch floppy drive that let its FCS operating system save up to 51.2 kilobytes on each disk. The APF Imagination Machine by 1979, game consoles were all the rage right alongside home computers, and APF Electronics placed their bets on a combination of the two with the Imagination Machine. The first part was the APF M1000 game console, featuring two controllers and a built-in game called Rocket Patrol. But it could be dropped into the IM-1, a home microcomputer with a 3.579 MHz Motorola 6800, a stereo cassette deck, internal speaker, and 5-octave sound chip, and the APF OS with its own basic language interpreter. It could even be augmented with RS-232 serial, floppy drives, modems, and extra RAM, making it one of the most expandable consoles ever made, and setting the stage for later machines like the Coleco Atom. And finally, the Seattle Computer Products Gazelle. Making its debut right at the tail end of 1979, the SCP Gazelle is one of the very first computers to sport the Intel 8086 CPU. It was also physically massive, with support for dual 8-inch 1.25 meg floppy drives, an 8-inch Winchester drive, and 18 S100 expansion boards inside. And if Seattle Computer Products sounds familiar, that might be because it was their own Tim Patterson who programmed the quick and dirty operating system on the Gazelle. This went on to become 86DOS, which was infamously purchased by Microsoft for $50,000 and became the operating system for the IBM PC. MS-DOS, Windows, and Microsoft itself owes its very existence to the Gazelle, even if the machine itself is just a footnote in the history of computing. And if you enjoyed this episode of LGR, perhaps you'd like to see some of my others. There's new videos every Monday and Friday, as well as previous ones that I've made on the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, so check them out if you'd like. And as always, thank you very much for watching.